and welcome to Budget with Business Standard. I am Nivedita Mukherjee. In this episode, we are going to take a close look at the two most topical subjects, agriculture and healthcare. This budget will be keenly watched for what it offers to the agriculture and rural sectors as the long drawn farmers agitation is still fresh in our minds also elections are coming up in two agriculture states uttar pradesh and punjab in that backdrop what can we expect from the budget here's a report The first advanced estimates peg farm sector growth in FY22 at 3.9%. This means the full year growth for the sector could be slightly higher than the long term average of 3 to 4%. But more than farm sector growth, it is the overall rural recovery that will be of significance in the coming year. The reason? Well, India's food grain production in the 2020-21 crop year, July to June, is projected at an all-time high of almost 309 million tons. But the latest situational assessment survey of the agriculture sector shows that the share of crop production in an average agriculture household's monthly income dropped from 47.9% to 37.7% between 2012-13 and 2018-19. During the same period, the share of wages rose from 32.2% to 40.3%. That implies wages now are one of the main sources of income for agricultural households in the country. Also, its failure to free marketing from the clutches of estranged players will test the center's resolve to undertake bolder reforms for the agriculture sector. What could the budget do? To free up agriculture markets, the center could now look to expand the scope of its ongoing initiatives like ENAM or building 22,000 rural hearts. A big thrust of the government has been on collectivization. After launching an ambitious scheme to form 10,000 new farmer producer organizations with a total outlay of around 6,900 crore rupees, the center for the first time formed a separate ministry of cooperation in FY22 that Home Minister Amit Shah was trusted with leading this newly formed ministry was seen by many as a signal that the ministry and its working will play a significant role in the years to come. With almost 0.8 million registered corporatives across the country, a large number of them in rural and semi-urban areas and approximately 400 million people directly impacted by the corporatives any control or power over them opens up a huge opportunity for political patronage, either at the state level or the central level. The forthcoming budget could lay down a roadmap for the newly formed ministry and the work that it plans to undertake in its first year of operations. The scheme to computerize around 92,000 primary agriculture cooperative society, around 65,000 of them viable, was first announced in 2017, with an outlay of around 2,000 crore rupees. However, the scheme could not make much headway after that. The coming budget is expected to give a fresh lease of life to this, along with the focus on a national policy for cooperatives in expanding the scope and ambit of registration of multi-state cooperative societies. With polls around the corner in three key states of UP, Punjab and Uttarakhand and farmers accounting for a sizable chunk of the electorate here, the centre could look at increasing the annual amount under the PM Kisan from the existing 6,000 rupees or to bring more farmers under the scheme's ambit by including those who were left out earlier. For rural India, a big thrust could be on adequately funding schemes like Manrega and also rural roads and housing. We spoke to Crystal Director Hethal Gandhi to understand what could be the salient points of the 2022-23 budget. 
reforms in the agricultural side of the value chain will continue to remain important both in the short as well as the long term. The government of India had propagated doubling of farmer incomes. Farm linked incomes account for only 50% of the total farmer's household incomes. A number of other activities like dairy, poultry, and rega or wage linked labor charges constitute the remaining 50%. We believe investments to improve productivity and efficiency in these areas can drive short-term gains in terms of incomes. Further, NREGA based disbursements, Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana Rural have been pretty effective in improving farmer incomes over the past three years. We believe trends and allocations over there may also continue. We spoke to Kiran Visa, co-founder of Ritu Swaraj Vedika and National Working Group member of the All India Kisan Sangarsh Coordination Committee. What the farmers uh, organizations would expect uh, is definitely that the government should release a white paper on the doubling of farmers' incomes and where the farmers' incomes are now and how it proposes to actually increase the farmers' incomes because so far in the last six years, uh, the evidence suggests that uh, it has uh, failed to do so. Uh, secondly, uh, the very key demand underlying the farmers' agitation is that they should get a fair price for their produce, especially the minimum support price which the government itself announces should be guaranteed to all the uh, farmers. And in fact, it has been demanding that there should be a legislation which guarantees the minimum support price. The gap between the announced MSP and the actual price that the farmers are getting in the market is about 50,000 crores. Uh, 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 now, in the if you take last year's figures, it would be close to about 75,000 crores. Uh, so something of that order needs to be allocated by the government, uh, something of the order of 50,000 crores of fund needs to be established uh, for market intervention in a timely way in order to ensure MSP. What uh, we've been finding is that the government uh, budget allocations have been reducing over the years. You take any of the flagship schemes like the Pradhan Mantri, Krishi uh, uh, Sinchai Yojana, the Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana, uh, the PM Asha scheme or the Rashi Krishi Vikas Yojana, uh, all these schemes are uh, actually performing below par. So in fact, the farmers uh, would expect that the government should come out with a status paper on all these schemes, at least the flagship schemes, at least all the schemes where which have a Pradhan Mantri in front of them. Next up is healthcare. Like last time, this budget too will be presented in the shadow of a raging pandemic. The question is, will the finance minister increase the allocation for healthcare? Well, K. Srinath Reddy, President of Public Health Foundation of India believes there's a greater political commitment to health after years of neglect. Professor Reddy spoke to Ruchika Chitravanshi about his expectations from the budget. Hello and welcome to our show, Budget with Business Standard. We have with us today, Professor K. Srinath Reddy. He's the president of the Public Health Foundation of India and one of the foremost health experts of our country and an authoritative voice on the subject. Welcome to the show, sir. Uh, so, Pleasure. So first of all, uh, this is going to be the second pandemic budget uh, back to back. Now in this uh, situation, what do you think uh, the government is expected to do for the healthcare sector? I believe we have had adequate warnings about how our health sector has been, in a sense, challenged in very many ways during the different waves of the COVID pandemic. We have also seen that there is now a greater degree of political commitment to strengthening the health sector after many years of neglect. This particular commitment has been reflected in the annual budget presented by the union government in 2021, February, and also to some extent in what the state governments are doing. But a lot more needs to be done if we need to continue to strengthen the health sector 
to meet the challenges. Sir, uh, in the last budget, we've seen uh, uh, Finance Ministry allocate a large amount of sum towards vaccination. Do you think we need that much allocation towards vaccination this year as well? I believe so, for the simple reason that we recognize that many of the vaccines that we have available mm -hmm. are not necessarily going to provide immunity over a very long period of time. That we are being challenged by new variants which have the property of immune escape or immune evasion, at least partially, they are not able to prevent mild illness, the vaccines, uh, though they are able to prevent serious illness and hospitalization and death. Yes. Nevertheless, I believe the people who are more likely to be susceptible uh, to serious infection, like as I said, the elderly and the immunocompromised, need better protection. Then we are also likely to see newer generations of vaccine coming up, like, for example, some of the mucosal vaccines, which can be nasally administered and may be easier to administer for children. So I believe we have to invest a fair amount in the vaccination program, at least for this year, though it may not necessarily entail universal uh, vaccination. So what, according to you, are the biggest shortcomings in the health sector now? As far as the budget is concerned, I'm not sure it can correct the bureaucracy part of it. No, of course. Though not. certain administrative reforms are going to be required for there, there as well, in terms of the nature of governance and accountability and people participation. That's going to be important, even from the point of view of improving the delivery as well as bringing in better accountability. We have shortcomings in infrastructure. For example, we do not have very clear cut network of urban primary health care centers functioning in many states. But it is the district hospitals that require the greatest attention. They ought to become, once they're upgraded, major training centers for health workforce. New medical colleges can be attached to them. New nursing colleges can be attached to them. Most importantly, allied health professionals of various categories can be trained there. So our biggest priority should be while improving infrastructure, while investing in all kinds of health technologies, especially digital technologies, we have to have a multi-layered, multi-skilled health workforce created as a high priority. Uh, Dr. Reddy, one last thing that I wanted to talk to you about is that health is on the concurrent list. Uh, do you think that center needs to take a bigger role uh, when it comes to the decisions in the health sector? Well, I think the center should sort of in consultation with the states, set the overall policy. The planning should be done at the state capital level, but implementation with a fair amount of flexibility based upon realistic analysis of evolving needs of that particular district should be done at the district level. What you require is digitally enabled, decentralized decision-making at the district level with people participation for accountability. Thank you so much for taking the time and joining us. Most welcome. Thank you. The key takeaway from the interview with K. Srinath Reddy is that we need to invest in health, but it will be a carriage without wheels if we don't have adequate workforce. We are going to stay on the subject of health a bit more to understand the performance and the gaps in the sector through the pandemic. While the FM announced a big increase of 137% in India's health budget last year, what did it really mean? Take a look. Healthcare was foremost on Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman's agenda in last year's budget. Even though the worst of pandemic was yet to come for India, the FM announced a booster shot for health a 137% increase in healthcare and well-being expenditure. This increase mentioned by Sita Raman in her budget speech was based on budget estimate comparison. Here's what FM was referring to when she talked of the health and well-being sector. Health determinants of water, sanitation and nutrition are all added up together, swelling up the healthcare budget. An allocation of Rs. 2,23,846 crore towards health and well-being works out to be an increase of around 118% over revised estimates. A large chunk of that, rupees 35,000 crore, went towards COVID vaccination, a move that was widely cheered by the industry. 
Budget numbers often hide more than they tell. While FM announced a doubling of allocation for the health and well-being for the health ministry itself, which has spearheaded the pandemic response, the allocation has gone down by almost 11%. The expenditure budget for the departments of health and family welfare and research had dropped. However, it should be noted that the revised estimate for 2020-21 itself was about 24% more than the budgetary allocation for that year. So one could say that there was a 10% increase in health department allocation strictly on comparison of budget estimates. The National Health Policy 2017 has set a goal of raising public health expenditure from the existing 1.15% of GDP to 2.5% by 2025. To plug the gaps in public health infrastructure of backward states, the PM Atmanirbhar Swast Bharat Yojana was announced. The scheme has an outlay of 64,180 crore rupees for six years. Under this program, primary, secondary and tertiary centres and public health institutions like the National Centre for Disease Control will be strengthened. There has also been an increase of almost 23% in the expected health and education cess during 2021-22. While this cess fell short of the budgeted estimate last year, it could do better in 2022-23. While this cess fell short of the budgeted estimate last year, it could do better in 2022-23 with tax revenue through corporation income tax and customs expected to be higher. Now to something lighter. It's about lockdown, a word we've heard, seen and faced in the last two years of the pandemic. But the men and women involved with the process of budget making have been familiar with the concept of lockdown of a different kind. How, you may ask? Well, watch the next segment. Ahead of the budget, several officials involved in printing and proofing of the budget documents get locked down, literally, in the basement of the North Block. Before North Block got its own press, union budget was printed elsewhere in Delhi with similar secrecy protocols. The officials under lockdown don't even have access to phones. If required, they are taken to a guarded room for emergency calls. The finance minister of the day is among the small group of people allowed to enter the printing zone in the North Block, but without any mobile phone. Such is the level of secrecy. While North Block shuts its doors to the media in the run-up to the budget, the level of secrecy increases much more January onwards. Only on the day of the halwa ceremony, when the finance minister becomes a symbolic chef, the North Block doors open briefly for photographers to capture the ritual of recognizing the team effort in budget making. While budget making itself is an exercise in secrecy, there is a not so secret tradition guiding who really writes the different sections of the budget speech. Though some finance ministers have chosen not to follow that tradition, inputs for the budget speech come from three different wings of the finance ministry. The section on the state of the economy and the budget's overall policy approach from the chief economic advisor, the section on expenditure allocations from the expenditure secretary, and the final section on taxation proposals from the revenue secretary. Among the FMs who chose not to follow the tradition, it is said that P. Chidambaram typed out his own budget speech on the computer in his room to keep it completely confidential. Pranab Mukherjee depended only on a few key advisors for his speech. And as for Arun Jaitley, his budget speech often suggested that many draftsmen had been at work to put it all together. Every finance minister is known for individual style and ideas. What new idea will Nirmala Sitaraman bring to the table this time? We shall know soon. That's all we have for you today. See you on Thursday with more Budget Insights. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.